When you build a distributed system, it's because you're trying to build something that is more reliable than a centralized system. This leads computer scientists to study the theory of the possible. How reliable can we build a system? Is there a limit? The CAP theorem, originally stated by Eric Brewer, formalizes some useful limits on reliability. CAP stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. The theorem talks about the trade-offs between consistency and availability that you have to make if your system ever suffers partitions. We can explain what this all means by using an example. Let's say you're starting your own bank. Like all great startups, you decide to start small, with only one customer account and two ATMs. Your ATMs support three different operations. You can deposit money, withdraw money, and check your balance. You also have an invariant. You never want the balance to get below zero. Because you love distributed systems and you don't want to buy more computers, you store the account balance in the ATMs themselves. Each ATM has a copy of the account balance. When your customer walks up to an ATM and inserts their card, if everything's working, the system is fairly simple. If they deposit or withdraw money, you update the balance on both ATMs and then complete the transaction. The two ATMs always have a consistent view of the account balance, as it's always the same on every ATM. Also, users can do whatever they want, whenever they want, because the system is always available to them. It's working. But what if something breaks? There really are three ways in which the system can break. One is if the customer walks up to an ATM and it's not working. In that case, you really can't do much. You might want to put a sign on the ATM saying, hey, here's how you find the other ATM, but you know, it's broken. The second issue is they walk up to an ATM that's working, but the other one's not working. Or even scarier, they walk up to a working ATM and the other one's working as well, but there's a network problem, which means that they either can't talk to each other or their communication is too slow for the system to work. Honestly, if you walk up to an ATM and that one is working and it can't talk to the other one, it can't tell whether it's because the network has an issue or because the other ATM is broken. It just has no idea. And so they all look like I tried to talk to the other ATM and it didn't answer. The distributed system has suffered a partition in this case. So what does the ATM do next when this partition happens? This is the design decision that the CAP theorem talks about. The system has to then make a choice. It can either be consistent or available, but it can't do both. And so let me explain. If you had a consistent design, the ATM would say, I'm sorry, I can't accept deposits or withdrawals right now because I can't update the balance in the other ATM. It's not safe. So you as a customer, you might get a warm, fuzzy feeling. You're like, oh, cool. The bank is doing everything it can to keep my money and account balance safe. On the other hand, you might be annoyed because you can't use anything in the freaking bank. Or you could just do an available design. When you walk up to the ATM, the ATM could say, oh, I can't talk to the other ATM. I guess I'll just do my best. And so it will allow you to make deposits and withdrawals and it will keep track of what happened. And then later when the partition heals, when it can talk to the other ATM again, it just tells it, hey, this is what happened. You should update your balance now because the customer took out all his money or something like that, right? So with this design, it's more available but the two banks are inconsistent in the storage of the bank balance. In a nutshell, this is the cap theorem. When you design your system, if there never are partitions, you can make the system both consistent and available. But if there's a partition, you've got to choose. You either have a consistent design or an available design. So cap theorem simple, right? Well, not really, because in the real world, we can talk about degrees of consistency and degrees of availability and make trade-offs between those two. For example, when a partition happens, we could have our ATMs accept deposits, but not offer balance information or allow withdrawals. So it's only partially available. And that would stop the bank balance from going negative, but it would still have our balances be inconsistent. Or we could also allow the user to make deposits and also ask for balance information, but when we tell them the balance, mark it as tentative. We're not really sure if this is the correct balance, but it's probably right if you haven't been running between ATMs. Or we could make the design even more flexible. We could allow the user to do withdrawals, but only allow them to do small ones and rate limit how many they can do. And then that way, if the balance goes negative, it's not gonna go too negative too quickly. 
And so it sort of bounds our risk there. Or if the balance does go negative, maybe we can just hit them with huge fees, or in the worst case, sue them to get the money back. So how much complexity do you want to add to your system in order to get this higher availability? Because consistent designs tend to be simpler to build, understand, and to use at the cost of a little bit of availability, or maybe a lot of availability. Our ATM example is relatively simple. When our partition heals, the network starts working again, we can just simply use addition and subtraction to reconcile the differences in account balances. If we have more complicated data structures, merging conflicts become harder or even impossible to resolve. Who enjoys doing a git merge? That's not my favorite thing to do. So sacrificing consistency is not the only way we could increase availability in our system. You could add battery backups to your ATMs so they're less likely to fail due to a power outage. We could armor plate the network connections between them so that the network connections are less likely to physically fail. We could buy redundant connections so that when one network connection fails, we can just use another one. Or maybe we could just test our software better so that we're not going to have failures due to bugs as often. Uh, you know, there's lots you can do to increase availability. This trade-off between consistency and availability is not necessarily the one you want to make. In a modern data center environment, you might decide that Quite frankly, the network doesn't fail very often. And so if all of your machines are in the same data center, you're not going to have network failures often enough to care about it at all. And so you're not willing to make this trade-off. You're just going to design a simple, consistent system and then say, when you have a network failure, eh, our system goes down. That's OK, because it never happens. On the other hand, if you're designing something where you want disconnected offline operations, for example, you're designing Google Docs and want people to edit documents when they're not on the network at all. In that case, you totally need to design a system that allows for higher availability at the cost of consistency and figure out how to sync things back up later. So that, in a nutshell, is the CAP theorem. It helps you formalize an important design decision which may involve trade-offs, which is do you allow copies of your data to get out of sync with each other or not? Hopefully this video gets you thinking about this and you can improve your system's designs. And I'd like to say thank you to Axiom W for inspiring this video.